Good evening and welcome to our service of choral even song from Kenston Chapel at University College in Durham. It is a privilege and a joy to be able to share our services and uh, we hope that you enjoy uh, joining us um, in this way. And, uh, you can follow the words of this service on the Daily Prayer app on the website of the Church of England or in your own Book of Common Prayer. We use the traditional form of evening prayer. And welcome! Appointed for tonight is Psalm 13. Psalm 13. The first reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 44, verses 1 to 17. And he commanded the steward of his house, saying, Fill the men's sacks with food, as much as they can carry, and put every man's money in his sack's mouth, and put my cup, the silver cup, in the sack's mouth of the youngest, and his corn money. And he did according to the word that Joseph had spoken. As soon as the morning was light, the men were sent away, they and their asses. And when they were gone out of the city, and not yet far off, Joseph said unto his steward, Up, follow after the men, and when thou dost overtake them, say unto them, Wherefore have ye rewarded evil for good? Is not this it in which my Lord drinketh, and whereby indeed he divineth? Ye have done evil in so doing. And he overtook them, and he spake unto them these same words. And they said unto him, Wherefore saith my Lord these words? God forbid that thy servants should do according to this thing. 
Behold, the money which we found in our sacks' mouths we brought unto thee out of the land of Canaan. How then should we steal out of thy Lord's house silver or gold? With whomsoever of thy servants it be found, both let him die, and we also will be my Lord's bondmen. And he said, Now also let it be according unto your words. He with whom it is found shall be my servant, and ye shall be blameless. Then they speedily took down every man his sack to the ground, and opened every man his sack. And he searched, and began at the eldest, and left at the youngest, and the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Then they rent their clothes, and laid it out every man his ass, and returned to the city. And Judah and his brethren came to Joseph's house, for he was yet there, and they fell before him on the ground. And Joseph said unto them, What deed is this that ye have done? What ye not that such a man as I can certainly divine? And Judah said, What shall we say unto my Lord? What shall we speak? Or how shall we clear ourselves? God hath found out the iniquity of thy servants. Behold, we are my Lord's servants, both we, and he also with whom the cup is found. And he said, God forbid that I should do so. But the man in whose hand the cup is found, he shall be my servant. And as for you, get you up in peace unto your father. Here endeth the first lesson. The second reading comes from Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 through 9. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. 
God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man, that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man, that thou visitest him? Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownedest him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Amen.
The anthem this evening is Sicut Cervus from the Missa Pro Defuntis Tractus, a Requiem Mass by Johannes Aurelian. The words from Psalm 41, Sicut Cervus desiderat ad fontes aquarum, ita desiderat anima mea ad te, Deus, can be translated as my soul is a thirst for God, yea, even for the living God. When shall I come to appear before the presence of God? We give thanks for the glorious days which we have enjoyed here in Durham recently, for the warmth of the sun, for the beauty of nature showing early signs of spring, for the return of the birds, their joyful singing, and for the promise of new life that they will present. In this season of Lent, May we heighten our awareness of thy presence in the world, O God, as thou can bring back life and joy where pessimism, doubt, cynicism, or despair would make us lose hope. May thy grace take us by surprise and enlighten us a renewed sense of thy beauty, never failing love and care for us and for thy beloved creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray for our university, all the colleges, all students, scholars, and staff. We pray for all those who have to take decisions for study and work in Durham in the months ahead, following the plan out of lockdown announced by the government earlier last week. We pray for stamina after a year under enormous pressure. We pray for wisdom. We pray for a collective effort to help us all live in the best possible conditions that can lead us all out of lockdown in good health and with respect, care and love for one another. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As, as this day marks the second anniversary of the death of Professor David Held, former principal of our college, 
we are reminded that whatever we build is built on a community that precedes us, on the work and decisions of former fellow members of our community, of former principals, staff and fellows, through times of joy and times of grief, through times of abundance and times of hardship. And we give thanks for the testimony of the castle, which has been standing through good and ill for almost 950 years. We pray for guidance. We pray for wisdom. We pray for humility. We pray for courage and boldness to respond adequately to the needs and demands of our time and to embrace a vision in which everyone in our community has a voice, a place, and can contribute to a future of which we could be proud and grateful for. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We conclude our prayers in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.